Okay, great. So this is our last video and let's see what we have here so far. So this is video nine of nine. So let's go ahead and build the app and see what we've got so far. So our video, we've got a nice table here with two sections, color fruits and fruits, and we've got apple, orange, watermelon, and we've got the colors back here and we've got a nice table view. The problem is, except if I click on a row, it doesn't take me anywhere and doesn't do anything. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. Okay, so let's get started here. How do we do that? Well, this is gonna be a bit of a long video, so I'm gonna go slightly fast, so try to keep up. So the first thing that we wanna do in order for us to um, trigger a selection a row is to add our um, table, which is right here, our table view, uh, as a delegate to the um, a view controller. So to do that, just like we did with data source earlier in the series, you, there's two ways of doing it. There's three ways of doing it, actually. You could click here on delegate and drag it here, and now this is a delegate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that to show you the second way. The second way is you actually select the table view. You right-click or control-click and drag the arrow here, and then you see how data source is selected. Now you click on delegate, and of course this gets added just like before. The third way is doing it through code, which I'm not going to show you. So once you've added um, this thing right here in either way, uh, we have to go into the viewcontroller.swift and actually say that this needs to be a delegate. I've already done that here. So um, your app should look something like this. And all you have to do is type in UI, table view, delegate, and it's in. Boom. So those are the very two first things that you're going to have to do. After you're done that, we actually have to call up a function and that function handles the selection of the row. And uh, luckily enough, it's called did select, did select row. So type in did select row at, and this is the function that we're dealing with, table view, did select row at. So go ahead and hit return and um, it'll auto populate. And essentially in the code, we could print anything we want to prove that's working. So watch, I'm gonna print, print, I'm gonna say, something silly, whatever, right? So now that's really all we have to do. Now, every time we press a uh, row, it should print the statement in my console right here. So let's go ahead and run the app and check this out. The app is right here, let it build. And now whatever I click here should show something silly. And surely enough, it does. You see that right here? And if I click on another row, it does the same thing. Great. Okay, so we've proved that we could do something when we click on a row, but this is sort of not useful. Usually when you click on a row, it takes you to a different view controller and there's some data or something being presented. So we're gonna go ahead and do all of that, okay? So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and save my project here. I'm gonna show you how to do all of this. Now, I'm not gonna go through what I'm doing here um, mainly because this is sort of a different lesson. It uh, deals with uh, segues and different view controllers. But essentially, the first thing that you have to do here um, is create a second view controller. And to do that, I'm gonna type in view, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag my second view controller here. So I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna explain um, a little bit, okay? So, we've got a little view controller, and obviously I'm probably gonna want a button to go back here. So I'm gonna have a little button here and I'm gonna call this button, um, please go back. And this button when pressed will take me back to the original view controller. Obviously none of this looks good, but it's fine. I'm gonna have a label here. We're gonna have some text in here. So I'm gonna put in label and I'm gonna take that label. I'm gonna make this label a bit bigger. So I've got a little label here and we've got a button. Okay, so what we wanna do here is we wanna make a connection between the different view controllers. So we wanna make a connection or a segue between this view controller to this view controller. And the way we do that is we select the view controller and we right click or control click and drag to here. And it says, what kind of segue do you wanna create? We're gonna just click show here for simplicity's sake. And we're also going to make a little segue here going from this button back to this view controller. Okay, so I'm going to do that, right click and click show. So we've got um, a segue going uh, from this view controller here and this button right here takes you back to this view controller. Cool. Um, uh, now, 
for this segue right here, we need to have an identifier. And again, I'm not going to explain what all of this is um, because this is a totally different lesson. But for our, our identifier, it's going to be info um, view. And essentially here, it could be really anything. Okay. Um, this is just a name. This is a string. So we need to remember exactly how we typed it. And the last thing that I totally forgot is this view controller right here needs a class. So we're going to go ahead and create a totally different class. We're going to go file, new, file, and Coco touch class, press next. And we're, I'm going to call this my second view controller so I know. And I'm going to press create, and it shows me the second view controller right here. So I have two files, my original file right here, and my second view controller that handles this view controller right there. Okay, perfect. Okay, the next thing that we have to do here is we need to go back to our code. And in this function here, did select row at index path, we need to call up this segue that we just created in the main story. And to do that is uh, we type in self dot uh, perform segue with identifier, the identifier being a string, and it's the string that we've indicated earlier, info view, and has to be typed exactly as, bef as we've um, indicated earlier. And for sender, we could put nil. And the reason we could put nil is because in this particular case, um, we don't need to reference uh, the object sending it. Just to give you an idea, this segue here, so let, let's go through what's happening here actually. So every time we select a row, it's printing something silly, which I'm gonna keep here, because uh, just to have fun. And we're also, this line of code saying, listen, perform this segue, and this segue that it's we're talking about is this thing right here. So perform this segue that we did in the main.storyboard, and the segue that we're referring to is, it's got this identifier, info view. And that's how we know that's the segue that will be performed. Okay, great. So what's next? The next step is we actually have to send in data. So in order for us to do that, we need to actually create a variable that will hold the data first. So I'm gonna uh, create a variable here real quick. I'm gonna call it var um, um, uh, text to be sent and text to be sent is of type string and I'm gonna give it a value of an empty string right now. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna populate this variable that I just created, text to be sent, with data from one of my arrays. So essentially when we click any of the rows in the next view controller, it's gonna show um, the data here. So I'm gonna say text to be sent equals, and I'm gonna um, fill it with this array right here, this multi-dimensional array actually, my fruit. So I'm gonna say my fruit, right? And um, since it's a multi-dimensional array, uh, what we're gonna say is actually my fruit, um, I'm just thinking here, yes, um, open uh, open the square um, braces dot index path dot section, and this will essentially pick up the section of the first array, open up another um, uh, path and go index path dot row. Okay, that should work. Okay, great. So now that we've got that here, we're essentially taking the info from my fruit and we're putting it in text to be sent. Fantastic. Now we actually have to do one more thing, well actually a couple of more things, but we actually have to create another function here and this function is the uh, prepare segue. So I'm gonna type in prepare and this uh, automatically populates with the override function. And essentially this prepares the segue. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna type this in and let me type it in and I'll explain what this is. I'm gonna call this info, okay? equals segue.destination um, as I'm typecasting it here, second, oh, it's called my second view controller, my second view controller, perfect. So what I'm doing here, this function is, uh, is the prepare function and I'm saying, listen, when you're preparing the segue, go ahead and create this thing, info, right? It's a constant and essentially store in that constant the view controller Okay, the, my second view controller. So the segue that's gonna uh, lead to the second view controller, put it in info so I could reference um, a label or whatever is in there. Uh, and the way you do it is by typecasting it using the as as uh, um, keyword. And the reason I'm uh, for, uh, um, putting an explanation mark here is because I'm uh, force unwrapping it because I know there will be a view controller 
on the other end. So it's not the safest thing to do, but I know it will be fine. Okay, great. Now that we have that um, set up and now essentially we're sending the data, but now that's incomplete obviously because we need something that can receive the data. So if I go back to my main.storyboard, we've got this label and that's really what's gonna receive the data, but we haven't set that up yet. So how do we do that? I'm gonna split the screen here real quick and I've got my second view controller right here. And the first thing I have to do, as you guys all know, is create a label. Uh, create a label. Now, one thing I uh, should mention is, I'm gonna go ahead and press cancel here. Click on the second view controller, I forgot to do this. The class here can be empty. So if this is empty, which by default it is, uh, what's gonna happen is you can't actually create an outlet, right? So you need to select the view controller, you need to go class and you need to type in the name of the file that you created. So my second view controller. And now I could create a label and I'm gonna call this my second label because it's from my second view controller. Great, so I've created a label here that's associated with this view controller. And you're thinking, okay, well that's easy. The data is gonna be sent to this label and it'll show here and it's all great. That's all nice, except it's it's not gonna work. You're gonna get an error saying it found nil when unwrapping or something along those lines. I'm not even gonna show you. And the reason being is because this label has not loaded yet. Why? Because this label loads when this view controller loads, except this view controller doesn't load when we send the data. So if I go back here, when do we set the data? In, 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 in the function, in the segue. Well, guess what? The segue happens before the view controller is ever loaded. So we can't actually, let me just go back here, we can't actually put it straight into the label. Well, we the workaround is we actually make a variable that will hold the data first, then it'll go into the label. So how do you do that? I'm gonna create a variable called my string, and um, my string will be of type string, optional because it might or might not have data and it will be initially empty. Okay, great. So now that I've set this variable that will receive the data, so my string will receive the data and then eventually I'll put it in there. Okay, great. Okay, now that I have that set up, what do I do next? I go back to my view, uh, my original file, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and save. I go back to my view controller and under the prepare uh, function, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, info, which is this thing right here, right? Info dot uh, my string, which is the string that we just created, right? So that variable, uh, and we're gonna give it the data, which is text to be sent, right? So what am I doing here? So this text to be sent has the data from my fruit. So the data from my fruit is gonna go into text to be sent. In the prepare segue, I'm gonna take the data from text to be sent and I'm gonna put it in the string called my string, which I just created in the second view controller. And the reason I put info is because this info here holds the second view controller, okay? So I hope you followed me there. And now um, I go back to my second view controller and in the view did load as an example, just as an example, um, all I'm gonna say is um, my second uh, my second label, which is um, this label right here dot text equals uh, my string, right? So I'm taking the content of my string and I'm putting it in the text of my label. Now, if you go ahead and run the app. you will see now that whenever we click any of these, um, whenever we click any of these rows, it'll segue and it'll give me the data Apple. If I go back, if I click here, it should say orange because it's taking the data from the array. Watermelon, it'll say watermelon. And of course, it's always saying something silly. I don't know if you pay attention here because I kept that code in there. If I go uh, green, red, it should say green, red and so on and so forth. And now what, what's happening is um, the um, I'm responding to my actual um, row presses, uh, pro, uh, row selections rather, and the data that's being sent is unique. It's not identical every time. It's based on this array right here that I have. Of course, this could be um, 
this array right here, this multidimensional array. Of course, it could be anything. It could be a picture. It could be strings. It could be numbers. It could be anything else. But that's really the basics of it. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Oh, actually, before I end with this, let me uh, let me say one last note here. Uh, two things that you probably want to remember. Um, the first is um, I put this in view did load. You probably don't want to do that. Pra uh, industry standards. You probably want to um, put it in the um, a view did appear, which actually occurs after view did load. So view did load happens this function, and then view did appear comes next. The second thing is you probably want to catch the function to ensure that there's data um, happening for safety. So this thing right here might not pass any data. In my case, obviously, I know I was passing data, but you probably want to put a catch here saying that, listen, if there is something in string, then put in the label. Otherwise, your app might crash. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. Take care.